بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مغن له ومن يذلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن أستق الحديث كتاب الله وأحسن الهدى هدى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ظلالة وكل ظلالة في النار أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته So inshallah we'll continue from where we left off Last week and just to briefly mention last week's lesson is where the Sheikh was explaining how uh, the second uh, nullifier of Islam and that in particular was uh, was in reference to people who uh, you know direct their worship to an intermediary whatever that intermediary or thing in the middle may be and the Sheikh came with uh, uh, evidences from the Quran with regards to that um, and uh, that was mentioned last week so whoever missed that on his recap can refer back to last week's lesson so we continue from where the red highlighted text is so the Sheikh continues uh, from that point and he says وَقَوْلِهِمْ إِنَّ هَذَا هُوَ الْمُرَادُ بِقَوْلِهِ وَابْتَغُوا إِلَيْهِ الْوَسِيلَةِ قَالُوا هَذِهِ وَسِيلَةٌ إِلَى اللَّهِ تَعَالَى قَالُوا هُوَ الْمُرَادُ بِقَوْلِهِ تَعَالَى أُولَٰئِكَ الَّذِينَ يَدْعُونَ يَبْتَغُونَ إِلَىٰ رَبِّهِمُ الْوَسِيلَةَ أَيُّهُمْ أَقْرَبُ وَالْوَسِيلَةُ بِإِجْمَاعِ أَئِمَّةِ التَّفْسِيرِ وَعُلَمَاءِ الْمُسْلِمِينَ الْقُرْبَةُ إِلَىٰ اللَّهِ بِفِعْلِ طَاعَتِهِ وَاجْتِنَابِ مَا نَهَىٰ عَنْهُ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَىٰ هذا هي الوسيلة so then the Shaykh, he mentions an ayah from the Qur'an, part an ayah from <coughs> Surah Al-Ma'idah, verse 35, and another ayah uh, from Surah Al-Isra, verse 57. So if we go to Surah Al-Ma'idah first, we'll read the whole ayah. O you who believe, do your duty, uh, do your duty to Allah and fear Him. Seek the means of approach to him and strive hard in his cause as much as you can so that you may be successful and uh, paying particular attention to seek the means of approach to him. I wasila. And then let's go to Surah Al-Isra verse 57 where Allah Jalla wa'ala says those whom they call upon like Isa, Jesus, son of Maryam or Uzair, Ezra or an angel, etc., desire for themselves means of access to their Lord, Allah, as to which of them should be the nearest, and they, Isa, Jesus, Uzair, Ezra, and the angels, etc., hope for his mercy and fear his torment. Verily, the torment of your Lord is something to be afraid of. So the Shaykh, he mentions here, he says, that the wasila here is seeking nearness, or a means to, to seeking nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Shaykh mentions here that the scholars have agreed upon and the scholars of uh, tafsir who explain the Quran and the scholars in general have agreed upon the meaning of wasila and the meaning of wasila is seeking nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by ob uh, being obedient to him, obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the commands he's given us and staying away from those things that he has forbade for us Subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Shaykh says, this is wasila. So he continues, he says, Al-wasilatu allati yubtagha biha thawab Allahi wa takunu biha al-najat min azabihi wa iqabihi hiya an yaf'ala al-abdu ma amrahu Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bihi an yuti'ahu fi ma amar wa an yantahi'a وَأَنْ يَنْتَهِيَ عَمَّا نَهَا عَنْهُ وَزَجَرْ هَذِهِ هِيَ الْوَسِيلَةِ اِبْتَغُوا إِلَيْهِ الْوَسِيلَةِ اَيْ الْقُرْبَ مِنْهُ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى بِفِعْلِ مَا أَمَرْ وَتَرَكَ مَا نَهَا عَنْهُ وَزَجَرْ هَذَا الَّذِي يُتَقَرَّبُ بِهِ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَتُنَالُ بِهِ وَلَايَةُ لِلَّهِ كما في حديث الولي المشهور So let's stop there for a second. So then the Sheikh, he goes on to say, الوسيلة 
it is when somebody is seeking nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his reward and and seeking salvation from his punishment and and it is for the servant he acts out he does all that which Allah commands him or has commanded him to do and he is obedient to Allah subhanahu wa, uh, wa ta'ala and that which Allah has commanded him is obedient and he obeys those commands and likewise for the uh, uh, prohibitions and he stays away from that which Allah has prohibited him from and stays away from it and does not fall into those actions or those deeds this is al-wasila this is what the shaykh says and then he mentions the ayah from ibtaghu ilayhi al-wasila then the shaykh says i.e. you know seeking nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by um, carrying out the commands that Allah has commanded us to do and leaving off those things that Allah has forbade us from he says that this is seeking nearness to Allah this is what wasila is and by that you obtain uh, that status of uh, being a close friend and under the protection of Allah and being near to Allah being one who is near to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, and like a friend to subhanahu wa ta'ala and a close associate of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala i.e. walaya is a wali by doing this he becomes a wali of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then the shaykh he mentions as um, narrated in the hadith uh, the famous hadith known as the hadith of the wali yeah because it's to do with walaya as in it describes in the hadith Allah describes the person who reaches that status of being a close friend and an associate of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and what is that the shaykh he quotes this hadith he says and he quotes it and mentioned here as you can see in the high, uh, blue highlighted text قال الله سبحانه وتعالى ما تقرب إلي عبدي بشيء أحب إلي مما افترضته عليه ولا يزال عبدي يتقرب إلي بالنوافل حتى أحبه. So that's part of the hadith. The rest of it will come. So we're just breaking it down bit by bit. So here Allah سبحانه وتعالى says hadith could see this what Allah سبحانه وتعالى says. He says that my slave, my servant. He seeks to be near to me, yeah, up until the point I love him. By what? By carrying out all that is obligated upon him. All the things that I have obligated upon my slave, he carries them out and he executes that duty. And he does those actions, those things that I have obligated upon my slave. And he continues to get closer to me by performing uh, optional acts. Above that which I have obligated for him. So all the optional acts and good deeds as well. Then he becomes close and close to me. Up until the point he reaches a point where I love him. But this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying this. And this is a, a clear guidance for whoever wants to reach that status. So then the shaykh continues. He says. هذه هي الوسيلة الوسيلة التقرب إلى الله بالفرائض. وَإِذَا وُفِّقَ الْعَبْدُ لِلْفَرَائِدِ وَزَادَ بِفِعْلِ النَّوَافِلِ وَالْغَائِبِ وَالْمُسْتَحَبَّاتِ كَانَ هَذَا أَعْظَمَ فِي بَابِ الْوَلَايَةِ وَلِهَذَا قَالَ أَهْلُ الْإِلْمِ إِنَّ, إن الْوَلَايَةَ عَلَى دَرَجَتَيْنِ دَلَّ عَلَيْهِمَا هَذَا الْحَدِيثِ So then the shaykh he says this is wasila, this is the means that the slave of Allah seeks to reach the close uh, to reach you know and attain the love of Allah and become close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala firstly as taken from this hadith firstly is by doing all that which we have been obligated to do all the obligations the faraid the obligations and if the slave the servant of Allah is given success through that then he increases upon that from doing the obligations he also starts doing optional non -ob uh, obligatory acts of worship as well and recommended acts of worship up until the point he reaches the full status of walaya and Allah loves him so then the shaykh says he says with regards to this close friendship that you gain or closeness to Allah and becoming a close associate of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and being a close friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala i.e. walaya 
And then the Sheikh says that what's ex- uh, uh, extracted from this hadith in terms of knowledge is that there are two levels of uh, uh, walaya. There's two levels uh, that this hadith demonstrates to us. And the Sheikh, he carries on, he explains this now. He says, Ad-darajatul ula min darajatil walayati anna al-abda waliyun min awliya illa al-muhafidatu ala al-faraid فَالَّذِي يُحَافِظُ عَلَى الْفَرَائِدِ وَيَتَجَنَّبُ الْمُحَرَّمَاتِ هَذَا وَلِيٌّ مِنْ أَوْلِيَاءِ اللَّهِ أَلَّذِي يُحَافِظُ عَلَى الْفَرَائِدِ الَّتِي أَفْتَرَضَهَا اللَّهُ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى عَلَيْهِ وَيَتَجَنَّبُ الْمُحَرَّمَاتِ الَّتِي نَهَا عَنْهُ هَذَا وَلِيٌّ مِنْ أَوْلِيَاءِ اللَّهِ وَهَذِهِ هِيَ الدَّرَجَةُ الْأُولَى مِنْ دَرَجَاتِ الْوَلَايَةِ لِأَنَّ الْحَدِيثَ مَعْرُوفٌ in the ulama bi hadith al wali al hadith kulluhu an al wali wa man wa man huwa al wali wa ma hiya makan wa ma hiya makanatuhu inda Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa bada rabbul alamin subhanahu wa ta'ala hadha al hadith al qudsi bi qawlihi man 'ada li waliyan so let's just hold on there so the sheikh he goes on to tell us he says that the first level of the wali, out of the two levels, the first level of wilaya or walaya is that the slave, he is a wali from the awliya of Allah if he's in the state of preserving his obligations, i.e. carrying out his obligations, that which Allah has set upon him and commanded him with. So the one who then is in that state of carrying out these um, obligations and he preserves these obligations and he, he carries out all the commands of Allah, that which Allah has commanded him with from things to do and those things that Allah has forbade him from to avoid doing. If he does this and he, and he is able to uh, carry out and act out those, those commands like that, then he is a wali. A close associate and a friend, considered a close associate and friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the one who continues then, in terms of, okay, we won't get into that yet, I'm skipping this. So, that is the first level, right? And the shaykh continues, he says, and the person who stays away from the haram and carries out the commands of Allah, then this person is considered a, 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 a wali. And he and this is the first level of of uh, of wilaya, yeah, and the Sheikh says that the hadith, because the hadith is well known uh, uh, to the ulama, to the scholars, this hadith is well known to the scholars, uh, and it's uh, known as hadith al wali, hadith of the wali, just like in previous lessons, uh, in a previous book, I believe, where we were talking about, the Sheikh was talking about the hadith of Jibril, about iman and Islam and ihsan. So some of these hadith that are famous, that are well known, they have names to them, attached to them. Hadith Jibreel, that one I mentioned. Hadith Al-Wali, in this lesson that we're talking about now, about the awliya of Allah. So the Sheikh mentions to us, he says, and this, all of this hadith, it's about a wali. This hadith Qudsi is about, uh, about wilaya and the wali, a wali of Allah. And what that has of position and status with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Shaykh says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this hadith Qudsi, what did he begin with? He began the hadith with Man Ada Li Waliyan, meaning that whoever is hostile, Allah says, whoever is hostile to a wali of mine, to a friend of mine, to a close associate of mine. This is how Allah began that hadith. And what, what does the Shaykh say after he says Fakad Adantuhu bil harb? That Allah says Fakad Adantuhu bil harb. I will Allah says I will wage war against those who show hostility to my close friends and associates. I the only of Allah. And the Shaykh says Wa badahu bihada wa hada fihi makanat al oliya. And the Shaykh says that Allah began with the, this hadith with that. Why this hadith Qudsi? Because it shows you the grand status. Of a close friend of Allah. Whoever attains that status, he has a full protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that shows you the status and the position of a wali. Yeah, a true wali of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So then the Shaykh continues, he says, he mentions again, he says, 
man adali waliyan faqad adantuhu bil harb as mentioned earlier ka'annahu qil man al wali ja al bayan fi al hadith al qudsi qala man adali waliyan faqad adantuhu bil harb wa ma taqarraba ilayya 'abdi bi shay'in ahabba ilayya min ma aftaratu alayhi so that was also mentioned earlier then the shaykh continues he says wa hadhihi darajatu al ula allati tunalu biha al walaya wa yakunu al shakhs biha في عداد أولياء الله أن يحافظ على الفرائض ويتجنب المحرمات وهذا الذي يسميه يسميه العلماء المقتصد يعني الذي اقتصر على فعل الواجب وترك المحرم. So this is important to pay attention to, and this is where the Sheikh says that in this paragraph the Sheikh has explained the first level of wilaya walaya attaining the uh, attaining the status of being a close friend and associate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this is the first level and as a reminder uh, the shaykh mentions here the one who preserves his obligations from that which Allah has commanded him from the obligations and that which Allah has forbade him from to stay away from whoever falls into this category then he is a wali on the first level of walaya he is a wali the one who follows all the commands of Allah as best as he can he follows the commands and whatever Allah has commanded him to, uh, to do, he does to the best of his ability. And on the other hand, anything that Allah has uh, said to us to not to do, he stays away from those haram, those forbidden things. Then whoever falls into this category, then he is on the first level of walaya. And he is a close associate of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and a close friend, considered a close friend, as mentioned in the Hadith Qudsi. So then the Shaykh mentions that this person is also known as the al muqtasid so uh, the, uh, in English that would be somebody who's in the middle, who's economic. M- uh, what does that mean? Uh, a person who's economic. Meaning, he does what Allah has told him to do, but he doesn't do anything more than that. He doesn't do any extra optional deeds that, uh, that he can do, but he's not sinful if he didn't. So he just carries out all the obligations as mentioned, but that's where he stops. And this is what they say in Arabic, Al-Muqtasid. And it's come in the Quran as well. Yeah, Al-Muqtasid. Right? Uh, this person is also known as the Muqtasid. That he just fo- has focused himself on carrying out the obligations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and staying away from the prohibitions, but hasn't done any extra optional deeds on top of that. This is the Muqtasid. <coughs> and he uh, likewise has stayed away from the Haram. Yeah, Muqtasid. So the Shaykh continues, he says, ثم الدرجة الثانية وهي درجة المقربين أو درجة السابقين بالخيرات. so now the sheikh is going to explain the second the second level and this is the higher level of walaya. this is the top level of walaya, reaching the top level of walaya. and the sheikh says and it is the level of those ones who are the closest to Allah سبحانه وتعالى المقربين. and it is those who have have you know, gone out of their way and put forth good deeds on top of their obligations. They've gone and done extra optional deeds. Yeah. And the Shaykh says, وَلَا يَذَلُوا عَبْدِي يَتَقَرَّبُ إِلَيَّ بِالنَّوَافِلِ حَتَّى أُحِبَّهُ فَإِذَا أَحْبَبْتُهُ كُنْتُ سَمْعَهُ الَّذِي يَسْمَعُ بِهِ وَبَصْرَهُ الَّذِي يُبْصِرُ بِهِ وَيَدَهُ الَّتِي يَبْتِشُ بِهَا وَرِجْلَهُ الَّتِي يَمْشِي عَلَيْهَا ولا إن سألني لا أضيعنا ولا إن استعاد بي لا أضيعنا لا أضيعنا يا لا أضيعنا. so the the sheikh mentions here the rest of the hadith all the way to the end regarding the latter part of the hadith and this is focused around now on the um the people who have reached the second level and that is where is explained here, the person continues to do these good deeds and seek nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with that which Allah has commanded with from in terms of obligations, doing all the commands, carrying out all those commands and staying away from the muharramat, but goes an extra step and does all the optional acts up until I love him. Allah saying this, up until I love him. So if I have loved him, then I am like, I'm like his ears. I, uh, that I hear with, and I'm like his eyes that I see, that I see with, yes, yeah, that I see with, uh, and I am, and if he falls into any kind of issues, I'm there, uh, I'm there to help him, and 
uh, when he walks, then I walk with him. And if he asks me uh, for for something, I give it to him. And if he seeks refuge in me, in me, then then I give him that refuge. What does it mean? Does it mean that uh, uh, Allah becomes part of him? No, it doesn't. It doesn't mean that. And to understand this hadith properly, uh, as you see towards the ending, if he asks me, but Allah says, if he asks me, I give it to him. Whatever he asks me for. And if he re seeks refuge, then I, I give refuge to him and protect him. Yeah. So this is be this is the status of somebody who reaches the closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, becomes a wali of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the scholars explain this hadith, meaning that that because of his good deeds, because this person's upon good deeds, you know, he's always in that state of goodness. He's always in that state of goodness. When he walks, you know, he's blessed. You know, wherever he is, you know, he has a good effect. He's always worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, he's fair, he's God fearing. He, you know, wherever he goes, wherever he is, wherever this person is, you know, he's in he has that status, high status of walaya. Yeah. And some people say, Oh, you know, look, it says here, uh, uh, you know, that I you know, where Allah says, Oh, I become, you know, his hearing, and oh no, Allah says I become his eyesight and his seeing. Is, that's incorrect. It, it, it does not mean that scholars have explained it by reading the whole hadith all the way to the end. As you can see, the ending here, as you can see, my cursor, where if he asks me, where Allah says, if he asks me, I give to him. For example, meaning that this person is upon the total obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so if he asks Allah, Allah gives it to him. And that's what the hadith means. Right? As there's plenty of evidences elsewhere within the Quran the, and the ahadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi showing that Allah is never on the earth, is never part of any human being or any of that, and that Allah is above his arsh in a manner that befits his majesty. And that's well known uh, uh, with the people of knowledge, and the evidences are clear about that. And I just wanted to mention that so we don't fall into the same kind of error, uh, because uh, people do explain uh, out their ahadith in the wrong way, especially this one, to try and uh, push their misguidance so um, and try to push uh, uh, things like oh uh, you know worshipping a wali or you know t making a wali a ta'ud for example and worshipping a wali by trying to falsely uh, attribute you know uh, uh, and take a wrong meaning from this hadith without actually understanding it correctly yeah so then the shaykh continues he says ha'ulai awliya Allah وَانْظُرْ حَالَ أَوْلِيَاءَ اللَّهِ قَالَ فِي تَمَامِ الْحَدِيثِ وَلَا إِنْ سَأَلَنِي قَالَ وَلَا إِنْ اسْتَعَادَ بِي الْأَوْلِيَاءُ لَا يَتَّخِذُونَ الْوَسَطَى بَيْنَهُمْ وَبَيْنَ اللَّهِ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى بَلْ يَدْعُونَهُ مُبَاشَةً And this is another brilliant thing that the Shaykh brings. Um, and he says that these people, they are the awliya of Allah, the ones who fit this category of what Allah has explained, described about the awliya of Allah. He says, look at their conditions. Look at their state. Look how they are. And if you and the Sheikh says, if you look at the completeness of the hadith towards the end, where uh, where it's mentioned, wala in and if he and if he asks me, I if the wali of Allah asks Allah, wala in isti'adabi, same thing, asks Allah, turns to Allah in du'a, asks Allah. The Sheikh says, all ya, the all ya, they don't take intermediaries, they don't take a middleman, they don't use a middle thing in the way to reach Allah, rather. We can clearly see from this hadith Qudsi that the awliya, the true awliya of Allah, they ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala directly. And this is what the Shaykh mentions here. They ask Allah directly. And that's how you know the true awliya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's one of their signs that they never ask you that you need to have some kind of middle thing, person or whatever it might be to seek uh, Nainas to Allah And they themselves ask Allah directly Then you see some of the signs of the Holy of Allah Yeah So you know which ones are the true Holy of Allah And which ones who are the Holy of the Shaitan Yeah And so the Shaykh continues He says بَلْ يَدْعُونَهُ مُبَاشْرَةً يَسْتَعِذُونَ بِهِ مُبَاشْرَةً يَلْتَجِعُونَ إِلَيْهِ مُبَاشْرَةً يَخْدَعُونَ لَهُ يَصْرِفُونَ لَهُ دُعَاءَهُمْ ظُلَّهُمْ خُضُوعَهُمْ تَقَرَّبُهُمْ so the Shaykh says, as you can see, 
the, the true awliya of Allah. You know, they humble themselves in front of Allah. They turn to Allah. They seek refuge in Allah. They uh, lower themselves in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And all of this is, is a sign. Is a, these are the signs of a true uh, friend and associate and a wali of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And whoever does other than that, then this person is a wali of the shaitan. Anybody who does other than that. And the shaykh continues, he says, أَطَعُوا الشَّيْطَانِ فِي مَا دَعَاهُمْ إِلَيْهِ مِنْ عِبَادَةِ غَيْرِ اللَّهِ وَصَرْفِ التَّقَرُّبِ لِغَيْرِهِ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى وَمَا أَطَعْتِهِمْ لِلشَّيْطَانِ وَإِبَادَتِهِمْ وَإِبَادَتَهُمْ لِغَيْرِ اللَّهِ أَوْهَمَهُمُ الشَّيْطَانِ أَنَّهُمْ أَوْلِيَاء وَظَنَّ عَيْدًا فِيهِمْ بَعْضُ النَّاسِ أَنَّهُمْ أَوْلِيَاء وَهُمْ أَوْلِيَاءُ لِلشَّيْطَانِ لَيْسُ أَوْلِيَاء لِلَّهِ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى So the shaykh says, those, now looking at from a different side, those who have obeyed the shaytan and they have, you know, uh, called to the shaytan and they've done dua and they, you know, they've called to the shayateen or the shaytan and they worship the shaytan or worship other than Allah committing shirk and they've directed uh, their worship to other than Allah then these these people then they are the old yah of the shaitan they have obeyed the shaitan and their worship is other is for other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the shaitan has made them think and trick them in thinking that they are the old yah of Allah when they are actually in fact the old yah of the shaitan the devil the satan and they've also uh, wrongly assumed that in them are some people who are of the awliya. And in fact, they are the awliya, the, the associates and close friends of Satan. They are not the close friends and associates of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So then the shaykh continues and he says, he says, let me see where I am. Awliya Allah azza wa jal, humu ladheena yuhafidhuna ala al-faraid. وَيَتَجَنَّبُونَ الْمُحَرَّمَاتِ هَذِهِ الدَّرَجَةُ الْأُولَى وَأَعْلَى مِنْهَا دَرَجَةً مَنْ يَزِيدُ عَلَى ذَلِكَ بِفِئْلِ الرَّغَائِبُ وَالنَّوَافِلُ وَالْمُسْتَحَبَّاتِ And just as a reminder, the Shaykh mentions to us, he says, the close friends and associates and the awliya of Allah, جل, they are the ones who preserve what Allah has obligated upon them. And they stay away from that which Allah has forbade them from. And this is the first level of walaya. And what's higher than that uh, in uh, status are those who fall into the first category, the first level, and also the second level, by which they do all kinds of good deeds and optional acts and recommended acts on top of what Allah has obligated upon them. And then the shaykh continues, he says, وَهَذَا الْمَعْنَ المذكور فِي هَدِيثِ الْوَلِي مُقَرَّرٌ فِي الْقُرْآنِ الْكَرِيمِ فِي صِفَةِ الْأَوْلِيَاءِ قَالَ اللَّهُ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى أَلَا إِنَّ أَوْلِيَاءَ اللَّهِ لَا خَوْفٌ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا هُمْ يَحْزَنُونَ كَأَنَّهُ قِيلَ مَنْ هُمْ مَا صِفَتُهُمْ قال الله عز وجل الذين آمنوا وكانوا يتقون هؤلاء أولياء أولياء الله الذين آمنوا وكانوا يتقون أي جمعوا بين الإيمان والتقوى فمن كان مؤمنا تقيا كان لله وليا فالذي أكرمه الله سبحانه وتعالى بالجمع بين الإيمان والتقوى فهو من ال... فهو من أولياء الله سبحانه وتعالى والإيمان والتقوى من من الألفاظ التي يقال عنها إذا اجتمعت افترقت وإذا افترقت اجتمعت فاجتماع الإيمان والتقوى هنا يفيد أن الإيمان يتعلق بباب الاعتقاد وفعل الأوامر وتقوى تتعلق بجانب ترك بجانب ترك المحرمات والبعد عن النواحي. So then the Sheikh goes on to say he says and this meaning with regards to the meaning of a wali is mentioned uh, in the hadith that we talked about earlier. Uh, of the hadith of the wali, uh, the close friend and associate of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, and it's also 
repeated uh, often within the Quran, within the Quran al Karim, with regards to the descriptions of the awliya of Allah. And then the Shaykh mentioned a couple of ayahs. So if we go to Surah to Yunus, verse 62, let's read the meaning. No doubt, verily, the awliya of Allah, i.e. those who believe in the oneness of Allah and fear Allah much, abstain from all kinds of sins and evil deeds which he has forbidden and love Allah much, perform all kinds of good deeds which he has ordained. No fear shall come upon them, nor shall they grieve. And then the next ayah explains who they are. Those who believed in the oneness of Allah, Islamic monotheism, and used to fear Allah much by, abs- by abstaining from evil deeds and sins and by doing righteous deeds. These are the awliya of Allah. They have iman and they have taqwa together. And the shaykh, he says here that if you have iman and taqwa come together like this, like as explained by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here in, in, in the ayah, as, as clear from the two ayahs that we've read and what the shaykh has mentioned here, or given us further explanation, then the shaykh says that this is a mu'min and he's taqi, he's, he has taqwa and he's a believer. And therefore, to Allah, he is a wali, a close associate and a friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah has, with his generosity, has ennobled the person, you know, uh, uh, with this status uh, uh, of having iman and taqwa like this, yeah, together. And the Shaykh goes on to say that he mentions the principle that if you see iman wherever within the Quran or the Hadith, he has a principle from uh, the Deen that if you see uh, if you see iman come together like iman mentioned around the same time as taqwa, then the Shaykh mentions here that when you see it like that, then it's in reference to the belief, belief aqidah of the Muslim, the, the Aqidah of Islam. Yeah, and this is what he mentions here. And it's to do with, uh, and he mentions here, so he says here, and al iman yata'alaku bi baab al itikad wa fil awamir, wa taqwa tata'alak bi janib. And so he says, when you see iman and uh, taqwa here, let's get this right. If he says, if you see iman and taqwa here, then the iman is to do with belief, itikad, aqidah, and, uh, and uh, uh, was carrying out the commands of Allah, awamir. And then taqwa means in this instance and context, then taqwa is in reference to uh, leaving off the muharramat, those things that uh, Allah has forbade us from. Right? This is what I mean. And it builds a principle here to remember. It's good to remember these principles. So the shaykh continues. فَمَعْنَ قَوْلِهِ أَلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَكَانُوا يَتَّقُونَ أي الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَبِكُلِّ مَا أَمْرَهُمْ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى بِالْإِيمَانِ بِهِ وَأَتَاهُ جَلَّ وَعَلَى فِي مَا أَمْرَهُمْ بِهِ سُبْحَانَهُ وَكَانُوا يَتَقُونَ أَيْ تَقُونَ سَخَطَ اللَّهِ بِتَجَنُّبِ الْمُحَرَّمَاتِ وَالْبُعْدِ وَبُعْدِ وَالْبُعْدِ عَنِ الْآثَامِ هَؤُلَاءِ هُمْ أَوْلِيَاءُ اللَّهِ هُمْ أَوْلِيَاءُ اللَّهِ أما الذين يدعون الولاية وهم ليسوا من أهل الصلاة ولا يعرفون شهودها المحافظة عليها ويعرف عنهم غشيان المحرمات وارتكاب الآثام هؤلاء ليسوا أولياء لله تبارك وتعالى وإنما هم أولياء للشيطان حتى وإن ندعو أو أضياء فيهم الولاية قال الله ألا إن أولياء الله لا خوف عليهم ولا هم يحزنون الذين آمنوا وكانوا يتقون. So the Sheikh he continues and he says the meaning of الذين آمنوا وكانوا يتقون from the ayah that we read earlier. He says, i.e. those who believe in Allah سبحانه وتعالى with faith and believe in Allah سبحانه وتعالى in all that which Allah has commanded them to do. And they have iman upon that, they have belief, and they obey Allah Jalla wa Ala in that which Allah has commanded them. They obey Allah and they carry out those commands. And that they they were yet takun, they were mutakun. They are fear, they fear from the conscious of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. They are conscious of and fear the anger of Allah. They don't want to obtain the anger of Allah or be from those people. So by 
by being mutakun, God conscious, and fearing the anger of Allah, they stay away from that which Allah has made haram and forbidden. So they stay far away from it. And they don't. They do their best to stay away from it and just making sure that they don't fall into these uh, instances of haram. And these people are the awliya of Allah. These are the ones who are truly the awliya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As for the one who claims to be a wali from the awliya of Allah, and they are not from the people of prayer, they don't pray, they don't pray the five daily prayers, they are not known, they are not well known to the people, or you know, they don't have good character, they're not well known to the people in terms of uh, uh, being of good character and you know following the commandments and being a good Muslim generally speaking and it's known uh, of them that they are you know they fall into all sorts of uh, forbidden acts and perpetrate all kinds of sins then those people are not the only Allah they are not the friends of Allah wa ta'ala rather they are the friends of the shaitan that's their classification even if the Sheikh says, even if they claim it, or somebody else claims it for them, that they are. No, because we look at the actions and what's apparent. Yeah. And then the Sheikh quotes the ayah again, uh, which we read earlier. Yeah. From Surah to Yunus, verse 62 and 63. So the Sheikh continues, he says, Wal musibatul adhimatu wal baliyatul kubra fi had al bab anna kathiran min al awam mukhturiqat. the Sheikh says there's a, a big tribulation and calamity that has happened many a time and even in our time and it happens a lot sadly is in this particular subject that we're talking about now about walaya about people who are considered walis and they actually aren't walis and people think they are religious and they are close friends of Allah because they're wali you know they're a wali and holy person and they and they fall into the fitna and tribulation and calamity of ending up worshipping them and using them as a middleman to reach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this is a big calamity because of course as we all know that falls into major shirk so the Shaykh, he continues, he says that, you know, people claim for others that they are walis wrongfully. And the walis themselves also claim for themselves that they are walis when they're not with the walis of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they misguide the people by saying, take me as a middleman or take this person as a middleman between you and Allah. So the Shaykh continues, he'll explain this here, inshallah, on this page. And then we'll finish the lesson, inshallah. So the Shaykh says, ومن يسمع القصص في هذا الباب يسمع عجبا أحد هؤلاء الطرقية التابعين من هذا هذا الضلال الباطل يحدثني شخصيا أنه كان يتلمذ على أحد شيوخ هؤلاء الطرقية المذلين وكان غرس فيه أن يكون ذكره لله جل وعلا بواسطة شيخ الطريقة وأعطاه ذكرا مؤينا مليئا بالبدع والخرافات وقال تذكر الله عز وجل بهذا الذكر من من طريقي وايضا حدد له الطريقة اذا اراد ان يذكر ياتي بحضرة الشيخ ويكون الشيخ امامه ويرى الشيخ وينظر اليه ويبدا يذكر الله بزعمه من خلاله يقول لي Okay, let's stop there. Then we'll continue from there, inshallah. So the Sheikh, he says, so whoever has heard these stories with regards to these false wallies and what they concoct from evil and what the general folk fall into of evil because of them is amazing and shocking. And he says, he says that, um, 
one of those who followed this type of way, Sufi tariqah, uh, was following his sheikh, so-called sheikh. Obviously, upon the sheikh, he was a, a misguider. Uh, and he says that somebody told me about this person who who was a student of this so-called sheikh of misguide this sheikh of misguidance, and he was part of his tariqa as they call them in in the, in the Sufi sects. They have these things uh, a tariqa that they follow, and he obviously was misguided. And he basically this sheikh of his he taught him that you do the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa taala by way of using him as a middleman. So using the this so-called sheikh as a middleman. So he, 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 he said to him, he gave him some remembrances that are particular. And the uh, the sheikh says that basically uh, that he uh, this uh, dodgy sheikh, let's say, uh, upon misguidance, gave it to his student and it was full of innovations, bid'ah and superstitions, full of bid'ah, and superstitions and he said to him mention Allah remember Allah Azawajal, with these remembrances I've given you and this is my way from my way and he also told him that if he wants to remember uh, Allah Jalla wa ala, and used to and wants to uh, use his remembrances that he should come to him this dodgy should come to him. The dodgy, dodgy sheikh should, the student should come to him, and in his presence, he should re, uh, look at his sheikh, uh, and in his presence, he should uh, read those uh, remembrances, those azkar. He told him this. So then, uh, the sheikh continues. The sheikh was explaining this book right now. He continues. He says, "Uturirtu, uh, maratan ila safar ila balad baid." فأتيت له قلت له الآن كيف أذكر الله وأنا سأسافر وسأكون بعيدا عنك قال عند السفر تأتي وأتيك الحل يقول لما أردت السفر أتيت إليه فإذا به مهيئ صورة له قال خذ هذه ما كما دام أنه لا تستطيع مباشرة ولو بخلال الصورة يفيدك خذ هذه الصورة معك يقول فأخذتها معي وكنت اشتريت الإتريك هذا المضي وأختفي عن سملائي داخل الباطنية داخل بطانية داخل الحاف وعد وعد الكشاف كشافة على سورة الشيخ وأبدأ أذكر الله من خلاله وأعتقد أن ذكر الله لا يصل إلي إلا بواسطة بواسطة الشيخ. So listen to this now. So then the student of this misguided sheikh, he says, I'm going to be traveling. Or what if I travel and I'm going to be traveling um, uh, to a far city? How can I remember Allah Jalla wa Ala because I can't be in your presence and you told me that the only way you can do it is by being in my presence and then uh, reading the azkar that uh, you gave me. And he says, don't worry, when you travel, I will have a solution for you. So the time of travel came and he went to his uh, misguided sheikh and he said to him, I have a solution for you. And what was the solution? The solution here was he had a photo made. He, he had a photo in a photo frame made. Uh, the sheikh took a photo of himself and gave it to him. And he says, take this and wherever you go, whenever you want to remember, uh, remember Allah Jalla wa Ala, just put the photo in front of you and face it looking at it. And um, uh, read those azkar that I gave you. This is basically what I told him. And and basically this person who was a student of this misguided sheikh, he he basically was tied down. It's as if he was tied down that he could not remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala except that he did it uh, through uh, his misguided sheikh as a middleman. Obviously this is clearly wrong because uh, uh, this, is of sh this is shirk. So the Shaykh continues to the next paragraph. He says, مِثْلُ هَاُولَى الْمُذِلِّينَ عَنْ دِينِ اللَّهِ تَبَارْكَ وَتَعَالَى كَثُرْ وَكَثِيرًا مَا يَدْخُلُ هَاُولَى شُيُوخْ شُيُوخَ الظُّلَّالِ عَلَى الْعَوَامِ مِنْ خِلَالِ هَذَا الْبَابِ وَغَالِبُ صَنِيءِ هَاُولَى يَرْجِعُ إِلَى طَلَبِ الزِّيَامَةِ وَالْرِيَاسَةِ وَالْمَالِ 
و اکلی اموال جہان و لعوام بالباطل بسم الولایہ و بسم المکانتی اند اللہ و الجاہ اند اللہ فیصبح العوام یعتقدون بہم و کل ما عرضت لہم حاجت فزعو الى شیخ لا الى اللہ و کل ما علمت بہم مصیبہ فزعو الى شیخ و التجعو الی لا الى اللہ ولا يبالي بعد هؤلاء بأن يقول للشيخ مباشرة أغثني أدركني ألحقني أنقذني أنا عائل بك أنا ملتجئ إليك يقولون له أحيا وميتا ولا, يلجئو ولا يلجئون إلى الله سبحانه وتعالى الذي بيده azimmat al-umur wa maqalid al-samawati wal-ard so the shaykh says here that the likes of these misguiders from the the ones who misguide from the deen of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala the ones who misguide the people from the religion of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala are, are many and there are many who who enter the people you know these shuyukh so called shaykhs but they are the shaykhs of misguidance and they enter upon the general populace and the general folk and the general people uh, uh, through this uh, 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 topic that we discussed, th through this way uh, of uh, saying, use uh, me as a, a middle person to reach Allah. And a lot of them, uh, most of the time, they, they concoct this kind of... Um, uh, tribulation and calamity uh, for what for what reason for the reason of leadership status and wealth and all these kinds of things and they eat the wealth of the people falsely you know they they, they, they fall into haram by doing this of course and they do it in the name of walaya and they do it in the name of them having a, a status and high status and position with allah where we obviously know in reality they don't have any status with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Because these are the only of the shaitan. They're the friends of the shaitan. And sadly, the shaykh says that uh, the general population of the Muslims, they end up believing in these guys. They end up believing them. So everything, every need that they have uh, in any situation, they go to these dodgy, misguided uh, um, uh, misguided um, sheikhs and instead of turning to Allah they turn to these misguided sheikhs and you know if something a if a calamity a calamity befalls them or a problem befalls them or they fall into a problem or an issue they go running to their so called sheikh and they seek refuge in their sheikh and not in Allah and it doesn't concern them. It doesn't even cross their mind. These people, it doesn't even cross their minds. And some of them, they even go directly to the sheikh and they say to the sheikh directly, you know, they say, uh, save me, you know, rescue me, um, you know, uh, you know, protect me and all these kinds of things. And I seek refuge in you. They, they say directly, you know, and I'm seeking refuge in you and all these kinds of things. A'udhu Billah. They say all this, whether their so-called sheikh is alive or whether he's dead, they do it and they fall into this and they don't even bat an eyelid, you know. It doesn't even cross their mind. They don't think. And in reality, they could. what they should be doing is turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala directly and asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because at the end of the day, all the affairs are in the hands of, in the hands of Allah and Allah is in control of everything and He is the one that should be turned to, not somebody from his creation. Yeah? And obviously by that, by turning to other than Allah, they fall into shirk here. This is an example of shirk that they fall into. So the shirk continues here in the last couple of lines before we reach the highlighted text. In red, the shirk says, فَهَادَ الْبَابْ حَصْلَ فِيهِ فَسَادْ عَرِيدَ وَإِذْلَالٌ لِلنَّاسِ كَثِيرٌ وَلِهَادَ أَفْرَدَهُ رَحْمَهُ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى بِالْبَيَانِ قَالَ أَنَّاقِذُ الثَّانِ 
من جاء لا بينه وبين الله وسائته يدعوهم هدد نوع الوسا الوساطة هنا قال جاء لا بينه وبين الله وسائط يدعوهم لأن لأن تخيل الوسائط بين العبد وبين الله جل وعلا على نوعين. So then the Sheikh says that this is why that the author of this book he in the second nullify of Islam which we are reading currently he mentioned that this he mentioned the second nullifier whoever makes between himself and Allah a middle path a middle person to go through a middleman or a middle thing uh, an object or a middle uh, an intermediary so to speak and calls upon that intermediary and the sheikh says the reason for this is because of you know as you mentioned earlier in the start of the lesson i think it was a couple of weeks back that uh, the the popularity of of this kind of mistake of uh, people using intermediaries uh uh between them uh, placing intermediaries between them and Allah and then calling upon that intermediary and thereby committing shirk with Allah Jalla wa ala. and then the shirk goes on to say and he says also that these uh, intermediaries are taken uh, are taken uh, you know between the slave of Allah and Allah as in in the middle put placed in the middle and they are upon two types and inshallah we'll, we'll go through that next week they're upon two types. So he starts with the first type, explaining the first type of intermediary, and then we'll go to the second, inshallah. So we'll save this, inshallah, and continue the lesson uh, for next week where the Shaykh explains the two types of intermediaries. Uh, and give, we'll, we'll go through that, inshallah, next week. Jazakumullah khair. Subhanakullah wa bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha ilan wa astaghfiruka wa tuwilaik. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.